All right, and welcome everybody here in uh, Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this later on for our next deck, which is another donation deck. Uh, that's how you can tell, like with the the DD here. This is Jeskai Angels. So um, this deck's donated to us to play a, a different version of Angels. You know how we always like playing our Angels decks. We did, had a mono white version earlier. This one we get to play uh, more of a flash game. We have these Rafka passions that allow us to um, play all of our uh, historic spells at instant speed. So that means Shalai, Angel of Grace, not Angel of Grace, sorry, Shalai, Lyra, Teferi, Aurelia, even History of Benalia. We could uh, play a History of Benalia at instant speed if we want to. Um, same with Treasure Map, instant speed Treasure Map. Um, so, I. Uh, Raph Compassion looked really impressive in our Esper and Bant Legends decks yesterday. So I'm pretty excited to be able to play Raph Compassion. I like that card quite a bit. Um, we even have we have a few Quenches. Quench is not a card that sees a ton of play, um, but I, I like it. I think it's a, a pretty solid counterspell. So I think that's a probably a pretty good addition. Um, I'm not sure about all the Lightning Strikes here. I'm kind of more of a Lava Coil person myself. Um, but we'll see how the lightning strikes kind of treat us. Um, got this one Clarion for some aggro matchups. In the sideboard, we have a bunch of different like instants and sorceries. I guess mostly mostly instants besides Lava Coil um, to kind of customize our deck depending on what threats the opponents have. We can kind of fit our removal to uh, work out there. And we also have a bunch of ionizes uh, that are good against the control decks. Um, so yeah, so that's what we got. Let's give it a try. Jeskai Angels. Yeah, he'll bite, bite and claw me sometimes. Uh, especially he doesn't like, he doesn't like anything in front of his face, being like a scaredy cat. So if I put like my hand in front of his face, he'll like bite it. Okay, so so the strikes are mostly in there because of mono blue. Um, having the instant speed against mono blue, gotcha. And that's why we are playing quench instead of negate is because of mono blue. Also. I will I would like to keep this hand. Even though this I guess this is an electric tower. I don't know why this electric tower is called Steam Vents. It's just a just a tower of electricity. But oh well. We'll lead with the Tower of Electricity and then a hallowed fountain. That's a really big fountain, if that's a fountain. Doesn't really look like a fountain. Oh, the fountain's in on the inside, in there, in between, like, those building things, maybe? I don't know. Is this a glacial fortress? Yeah, that looks like a glacial fortress. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, priest. Yeah, priest doesn't work against us. Priest of the Forgotten Gods against July. Yep, absolutely. What counters is it, Drake's? Um, ooh, a Mortify. I, I like uh, Plague Crafter and Eldest Reborn. Um, Cards like that, like removal that doesn't target, that just makes him sacrifice. I think that's all really good against Drakes. You can make electricity with steam, like a nuclear power plant. That's a good point. That's true. All right, so that's Sarah for the scales. The Seraph of the Scales does can gain Death Touch, so I can't just attack with a 4-5 Life Linker here because they can just Death Touch my Shalai. Um, I'm going to be 
playing Teferi next turn and tucking this Seraph and then hitting for nine in the air, lifelinked. That's my plan, Elise, right now. That's not a very good card at this point in the game. That's not either. Turn things strange. I'll play Sacred Foundry instead of Steam Vents. I don't like Steam Vents. I don't like Electricity Tower. This isn't a fight you can win. Usually aggro is pretty good against against Drakes. Not so fast. So I don't really mind that Teferi's gonna die here. <clears throat> I don't think it's that big a deal. Cause we're just gonna kill him with our flyers, so. Um Probably Gruel Stompy for best of one. Yeah, I would go with Gruel Stompy over Gruel Frenzy. Alright, so I want Coil against the Midnight Reaper. Seraph for the Scales deck. Shocks are Dece against Gutter Bones, I suppose. Not that great. I don't want Quench against the aggro deck, so I guess I could play some Shocks there. I think that's what I'm looking at doing. Don't necessarily love anything else. I think we're just going to go ahead and do this. Yep, looks good. If you could build one deck for best of one rank grinding, what deck would you use? Honestly, I I don't know. Um I just don't I just don't play best of one really myself. And so I don't really have a a well-informed answer to that um, unfortunately you know so I, I don't have a good answer for you since I don't play best of one the tie taker is a little bit annoying against us. I kind of want to make the trade just so we can instant speed our rafts and everything. No. If I do that, they just get to draw a card. I don't, I don't want my opponent drawing cards. Yeah, we have a Tithe Taker Mirror here. Ooh, good draw. Alright, Tithe Taker down. I didn't attack with the Resplendent Angel because I wanted to hold back their Tithe Taker. I didn't think that me hitting them for three and them hitting us for two was a worthwhile trade. Um, but if they just want to sacrifice their creature uh, to draw a card, I guess I will abide. Um... Clarion? No, let's go with this. I'm 
wonder what I want to discard to this Elvis Reborn. That's what I was trying to think. Like, I wonder if I want to dis just discard Clarion. Maybe I discard Wrath. Honestly. Yeah, I'm going to discard Wrath. All right, Lyra's kind of tough. I guess they can just go get Tithe Taker, then I cannot cast Angel of Grace anymore. Okay. It does target, so I would be able to. I would have been able to respond to the target at least. Take out this Midnight Reaper. Spawn of Mayhem. Spawn of Mayhem. So yeah, I could Clarion Life Link, attack with Angel of Grace, um, gain five, make a token. Which isn't spectacular. I can pop the Angel of Grace here and Pump the Angel of Grace there, attack with like a 7-4, but they just, you know, block with their spawn of mayhem, and then I, it's harder for me to gain enough life to trigger the Resplendent Angel later. That's like worst case. Take nine, go to one. One's not very much life. Yeah, the duplicate deck did really well. And gain uh, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So getting the counter on Resplendent Angel is pretty important because now the Resplendent Angel's activated ability will make it a 6-6 six, six, so it can survive Lyra.
Yeah, I could trade Tajik for their Tithe Taker and Token if I wanted to do damage with Deafening Clarion, but that's not that's not a good trade. What's the main best of three meta right now? Um, and you can probably just check out like MTG Goldfish, MTG Goldfish's site. It's it's a good, it's a pretty good rep representation here. I'm just going and finding that for you now. Ooh, my camera's off because I had that down lower whenever Hawkeye was sitting over here. It's definitely very reasonable. Here. Six, seven, eight. So Resplendent Angel. I just get to sit back and I die to priest. Angel of Grace can reset our life total to 10, and that is gaining life. So if if our life total is 5 or less, and then I do the Angel of Grace and put it back up to 10, that will, that will be gaining... Um, that will be gaining 5 life and triggering a Resplendent Angel. We just have to have Resplendent Angel survive. I need to draw Shalai. So this priest of the forgotten god stopped it, stop stops doing anything or tuck their lyra either one Okay, that's one. Oh, I waited till end step. Oh, I need to do that in the second main. I did it end step, and so Resplend after Resplendent Angel would trigger. All right, so at least we drew Shalai, so they don't get to Priest anymore. I need to put a stop on the second main phase. Dang it, I could have another 4-4 Angel here. I played that like I would get one. Oh, don't just draw a removal spell for Shalai. That thing gains Death Touch, too? That's ridiculous. I guess I have to just trade Resplendent Angel for Lyra. Otherwise, we're not winning this. Yeah, that counts as gaining five. I should have another four four. Oh, that's such a bad block opponent. Opponent needs to double block with their Lyra and spawn a mayhem. Like that's what they need to do. 
Oh, they get to. Oh, they get to sacrifice their thing to Pitiless Pontiff. Oh, opponent. They need to sacrifice their thing to Pitiless Pontiff. None of the other angels can get through Alira. I can't attack with any of the other angels because they can't get through Lyra. Okay, getting the Esper duplicate deck up here. How close am I to, to activating this thing twice? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess the next turn, the Spawn of Mayhem will trade with Resplendent Angel, though, the next turn. Okay, they're doing the double block. So we kill the Lyra. And now we're at, they're at 20, we're at 15. And we can maybe race them. In this video up here. Come on, deck. If we would draw things besides lands, we'd be doing better. But we, we did draw that Shalai um, at a very convenient time, so I can't complain too much, but only land since then. Um, Oh, come on. Uh, I was going to have lethal just attacking with all these creatures. Alright, so what if we still attack out here? With... Oh, we're still fine. Yeah, we're still fine. They can block two of these. Take eight. They kind of needed to trade last turn instead of taking the six. They couldn't. They couldn't really take the six. But then you know they wouldn't have that blocker anyway. So it really is going to trample over also because they, so we actually got to deal one extra point of damage because they blocked the, they should have had Spawn of Mayhem block the Aurelia. But that's all right. We got there. GG. Good job, Shalai. Way to keep, keep Priests of the Forgotten Gods from doing anything. That was a, that was a pretty... Pretty close game, real real good game there.
Oh, if they would have sacrificed Seraph and then double blocked the other angels. Ooh, yeah. I don't know why I didn't, didn't really think of that. But yeah, they. I guess they didn't think of that either. We were fortunate with them not sacrificing things. A similar thing came up with like the Resplendent Angel attack that really helped us. Alright, Mono Red. So I want to strike this thing. The problem with striking um, the Viashina Pyromancer is they could have a, a Chain Whirler, which is like the card I would much rather strike. So let's just go with this Tithe Taker, because even though a Chain Whirler would kill half of the Tithe Taker, we still have like the other half that blocks Viashino effectively. Or if not yet, I'd rather trade half a Tithe Taker than the Lightning Strike. And that's okay. So now I'm glad I, we saved the Strike. Firing off the quench at first sign. First ability to do anything with it. We do have the Tajik Shalai combo in here. That if we ever get to. Another light up and a skewer. That's that's an awesome light up state for them. Hey, J Jack Jr. Getting that gifted sub. Congrats. Thanks, DJ Polly B for gifting out a sub there to one of my favorite viewers, J Jack Jr. That is sub number 20. Hmm. Maybe I should have just played Tajik. I, I was going to play Angel of Grace because I used my mana better, but maybe, honestly, maybe I should have just played Tajik last turn. Alright, I'm glad they hit land land. It's a nice, healthy attack for 13. Where's that lightning strike now? Hoping our opponent doesn't have 7 points of burn. In those 3 cards. Ugh. Hoping. Nice. Okay, so that sub number 20, we'll be cracking open our pack after this. We'll be retrying on that Ravels of Ixalan pack from earlier. All right, so let's get Shocks, Lava Coil, Justice Strike, um, Honor Guard, taking out these Quench, taking out the Treasure Map, Quench, um, Teferi. I like the rest of these. Um, maybe Raffers in four mana and dying to strike and stuff. Let's get Negate in though. I, I do like Negate quite a bit. I'll take out another Raffer and Negate. This could be too much removal. 
Nah, no, no such thing. Uh, I always tie my tie this the same way. I do the uh, the full Windsor. Um, it's my favorite tie knot. All right, again, this. Let's get this Esper duplicate YouTube thumbnail done. How's our hand looking? Is it a keeper? Yeah, it's probably a keeper. Ready for some dinner? Please don't kill me, opponent. All right, that one's up. My opponent's not doing good at the not killing me part of my request. We're the boy. Yeah, you're batting my my watch, so I'd put it on so you stop batting it. Oh, guys looking at me like, how dare you wear your watch? I wanted to play with that. Like, what are you doing to my toy? Yeah, Redland would have been, um, would have been perfect here. Didn't get it. Would have loved another Clifftop Retreat. I'll still take one. Mm. Deck's not helping us out. Down to four. They didn't play a land last time either, because they've had four turns. We've had four turns. That means they probably have a bunch of good cards in their hand. Yeah, like all those. Alright, going to game three. We get to be on the play. I would keep the same hand that we just had. And if that happens to come up again for us. All right, looks like no bounties again. It's been three days since the last time we've had a bounty come up. On the draw, I don't think I would keep this, but on the play, um, you know, it's easier to get to our turn five being on the play. Leo Steam Vents. In case we draw like a shock. Yeah, hoping to draw cheap spells. Just basically any spells. Basically all the spells in our deck are, are cheap and good. Like that's that's a spell in our deck, that's cheap and good. That helps out quite a bit. Uh, 
That'll do. Stop. Okay, come here. Hey, come here. Stop. So the real question is what I want to do on turn five. If I want to Angel of Grace or or Lyra. So it's pretty obvious if I block Steamkin there that um, you know, it doesn't work out for us. Yeah, Angel of Grace does allow us to attack for six lifelink next turn. I think since I have two Lyras, I'm going to go ahead and lead with the Lyra. Yeah, uh, four sets leave each rotation. Uh, a year's worth of sets. Wind rotation happens in late September. Um, Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Corset 2019, and Dominaria will all be rotating out of standard at that time. Um, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and the next two blocks, uh, War of the Spark and Corset 2020, they will rotate in like late September of... 2020 of next year. Yeah, I've had a real good day. The sets won't be going anywhere. They'll still be on Arena and everything, but they just will not be legal and standard anymore. They have so if I don't block and they just have lightning strike or wizard's lightning, they can just on my um on my upkeep kill me if they have an instant speed removal spell. They have the mana because of steamkin. So that was that was the risk. I was thinking that I couldn't die, which was kind of like my plan with Angel of Grace, but I, I realized the folly of that plan uh, before. Before that happened. The problem is if our opponent attacks with both Chain Whirlers. Let's see if they have like a burn spell. Okay, no burn spell. Thankfully. Now it really gives the, the Lyra Vigilance and attack for 7 and that will do it. Yeah, there will be a couple months where M19 and M20 will both be in standard. 
Standard fluctuates between five to eight sets. Um, so whenever there's guilds of Ravnica, there's five sets in standard. Uh, Ravnica Allegiance added the sixth set. Uh, War of the Spark is going to be the seventh. M M9, or M20 will be the eighth. And then the set after M20, the four will rotate out, the one will enter in, it will go back down to five. So it always fluctuates between five and eight sets in standard. Um, with uh, <clears throat> with one rotation a year. All right, two and zero. Oh. The game, Dell. That was a real close game three there. That was a real good game. Yeah, your cat hairs gotten on my face. Okay. Uh, the first match we played with Esper Duplicate was like a free win. Um, then we played we played a good blue black deck and a good green red aggro deck. Um, we played against mono blue. Uh, the, like those those three were all pretty good. Those three are all good decks. Um, but, you know, not like the top tier, you know, it wasn't like Esper Control or, um, because he was just blue-black. Um, what, no soul tie. That's a great quench right there, great quench right there. Guessing this is just, you know, Wilderness Reclamation, you know, Bant Nexus. So this is looking like. I think I need to play Raf Kapashin this next turn. So I'm not going to upkeep stop. Oh, should I counter spell? Would be real nice. Didn't get that upkeep stop in time. Meant to do that. As you can tell by how I was clicking there. Didn't get it set quite in time. Please don't have chemistries in sight. Ugh. Unfortunately, that card's not rotating away. It seems like a lot of these cards that Wilderness Reclamation are playing are not rotating. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I don't think we're winning this game at all. I would I can't really imagine how a 3-3 can, can win. Get rid of this land.
Get rid of that land. Whew, a bunch of lands in a row. Hey, that's the first card that we've seen that's not a land. Or no, we drew the treasure map. Never mind. Second one. Um. Yeah, it's usually the, the different dual lands, uh, like they rotate around, you know, so I, it's unlikely that we'll have like these same lands next format. I do really like these lands though, like the, the buddy lands, like this glacial fortress type land. It'd be nice to keep those around, but it, it'll likely be something else. Wouldn't be surprised if we're just dead here. And they kind of keep standard fresh too, so it's not just always the same mana mana base all the time. It keeps on adding in like new questions of like deck building and everything. No, uh, so if you have like a card like like lightning strike that's that's like a dead card you don't actually you shouldn't cast lightning strike early um and let your opponent know of like hey you're at three less life because it may you know the opponent will you know maybe play a little tighter or you know like worry about their life a little more if they know they're at less life kind of thing obviously at this point the three life isn't that big a deal um, but it could get to a big deal like later on in the game um, But just like so like let's say you're just playing against control deck Don't just fire off your burn spells right away wait on those things till later because maybe that they'll maybe the opponent will take an extra hit in combat uh, and not use um, Not use a removal spell because they want to play like a chemist's insight or whatever Because um, they think that they're safe If we play the history end of turn though, we don't get the creature token. We don't get the we don't get the creature. You only get the creature Oh no no no, we would have got the creature. Never mind. So yeah, we could have held it. Sorry, I'm the first chapter happens right away. Sorry about that. My bad. I don't think we're winning this match. So lightning strike's not very good. Some of these more expensive creatures are not very good. They will most likely have biogenic ooze for like something lightning strike can kind of kill. Yeah, they may have Frilled Mystics as well. Alright, so... <clears throat> we'll see how fast the opponent is here. Um, you know, History of Benalia is a, a good card at ending games quickly. Kind of same with Aurelia. But we'll see if we can have the luxury of being able to play history in Aurelia before we have to hold up Ionize.
going to be the main question is if we hold up Ionize or play Aurelia. We may have to just hold up Ionize. Yeah, especially with them not playing anything and having counter magic up themselves. I'm shocking, so I'll be able to not only cast Ionize, but activate Treasure Map as well. What's the trick to winning the Esper Mirror match? I always wait to play Teferi Kaya with Thought Erasure or Counter Backup, but my opponents still seem to draw better every game. Um, yeah, I mean, usually just like a lot of duresses and negates and Thief of Sanity. I think Thief of Sanity is one of the most important cards in the mirror match. Um, Alright, I have to hit the view battlefield and get this started first, otherwise it'll skip past. Um, I know it's a spell, but I want counter magic. That's like all I want is counter magic. Concerned to see the opponent having a fog here or something. Um, but maybe sometimes you gotta jam your threats out more. Um, nothing too wrong with just with jamming out threats. You know, like your Teferi and so on. Uh, you don't you don't always have to be able to protect it. Get another counter spell, please. Another ionize. Ugh. Well, I guess we put them down to two. That's the best we can do. Hope, hope we're not dead. Hope we're not dead. At least they do not have the mana for Nexus. They obviously have more Wilderness Reclamations. Obviously. Oh yeah, they can cast Wilderness Re Nexus of Fate. Why was I saying they couldn't cast it? They can certainly cast it. schedule hold that thought I hate having treasures on the battlefield you have to hit resolve after every single little thing just this is the pro they really need to have a I would like to just f6 and not have to click resolve all the time like you know the the no seriously I don't want to actually click resolve The auto pass button, this auto pass button just doesn't work very well. See, like, so we're auto passing. You know, like the auto pass button should be, I don't want to, I don't want to respond. 
and it still stops. What do you think auto passing means? Do you think it means I want to re respond? Reverse. Yeah, you can hit the space bar is the same as clicking. Yeah, what do you think auto auto resolve? No, I haven't seen the modern mono mono green control deck. No, I don't. I don't really pay attention to modern. Resolve. They just had five lands when we passed to them, but okay. They didn't take all of the turns. We find something that helps us win. So close. Yeah, right? New player came across us at FNM. You never want to play the game. Certainly see that. Wilderness Reclamation is my least favorite card by Miles and Miles. Least favorite card in standard. I thought I didn't like Teferi before, but now I realize I that's how it was meant to happen. That Teferi is really not very bad at all. This card is something else. I am not going to sit this one out. much more malleable than people think. Yeah, Nexus is not the issue whatsoever. It's this Wilderness Reclamation card. Even, like, the, the Wilderness Reclamation deck that's just, like, Teamer with, like, Niv-Mizzet and Explosions and Electro-Dominance and that kind of stuff, that's just as... Just as bad. In my opinion. Not everybody's opinion. Other people think that Nexus is the problem, but I don't really see any difference playing against that, that team or deck that doesn't play Nexus. Or this one that does have Nexus. Yeah, you love him, Crimson? Yeah, some, some people love him. Some people love Wilderness Reclamation. No time for a break. Yeah, I certainly understand the people that um dislike just like that no th the problem is is wilderness reclamation is not rotating in october doesn't leave for another year and there's still all these cards with it growth spiral chemistry's insight expansion explosion <laughs> All those cards, like all the cards in the Teamer Reclamation deck, are all still gonna be here. 
I think that that opening that we had was about as good as we could possibly do. Um, this deck is just never going to win that matchup. I mean, I guess we could have had more counter spells, um, but we're just never winning that matchup. Uh, Jeskai Angels is the last deck for tonight. Um, stream time is usually 3 three to 10 Eastern. It's almost 10 right now, 9.33. Uh, so this is the last deck of the night. We're going until, you know, either we win 5 or lose 2. So if we lose another one, we're out. So we gotta got to keep winning. I think I want to save Coil. I'd rather like Coil a Jade Light. another hit for seven. So hoping they would get stuck with lands in hand and not have another Jade Light. Um... So the reason why I don't like those those reclamation decks, just kind of put a reason to it, is like you know, control is not great to play. It's the two of them share a similarity of it's just a race to see if you can kill them, um, you know, fast enough kind of thing. But against control, you are. Like, they're interacting with you, killing all their stuff, and they're just trying to, to stabilize with, you know, like, Planeswalkers or whatever. The Reclamation decks don't really care about what you're doing. All it is is them just trying to draw a whole lot of cards and get a lot of lands in play with, like, Growth Spirals and stuff like that. And just see if they can get their combo online of, like, Wilderness Reclamation plus enough card draw to just win the game. And it just doesn't really matter what you're doing. So you're not... You're just, you know, against, at least against control, you know, you're playing against the, the opponent and everything. With that, it really just feels like, you know, like they're racing for their, their combo and everything. And it's just not the kind of magic that I enjoy too much. It's, it's one reason why I've always liked standard more than modern. There's a lot of that in modern. Um, all right, so against Soul Tide, let's get this other Lava Coil in. I like the shocks against their early creatures there. You know, like they just don't they don't care to play interaction for your stuff because like once they you know it's just a combo deck. And not something I enjoy. Right, Takali Honor Guard. What do I not want? I guess I probably don't want Deafening Clarion in my Honor Guard deck. The games can go really late where Quench isn't going to counter stuff, but Quench is pretty important early. I want this Disdainful Stroke also. I don't know what I'm taking out. I'm taking out Tajik. Tithe Takers aren't incredible. I 
So we're gonna just trim a couple of tithe takers, get rid of the treasure map, and take out a raft, because just gotta cut some stuff. We got we got a wrath, but our, our deck needs to stop giving us lands. I liked our turn three of history and and wrath. Um, turn three, turn four, and I liked that we had good mana base. But after keeping the five lander, we can't really afford to draw land six and seven. Do I just coil this walker? I guess so. I know playing the, the shock land in here would be technically better for us, but I want my opponent to be a little worried about our mana. Yep. That card's like the reason to not use the coil earlier. But if, if we don't get rid of the wild growth walker, the history just gets completely blanked. It's already basically blanked. cast down. I think it was like a test cast down to see like what I would do. So like this is why I, I took out a couple of Tithe Takers because while Tithe Taker is good on turn two really bad in the late game. It's just, you know, not a card that's impactful at all in the later game. It is good on turn two against, like, Merfolk Branch Walker. It's good there. But, like, this 2-1's this not doing anything. It's a 2-1. It's a Guess we can trade it with a Land War Elf. So that's, that's why I trimmed a couple of them. Even though it is quite a good card on turn two. Uh, it's, it's an okay card again, turn two. It's depending on their draw. They just play Wild Growth Walker, your Tithe Taker does nothing. No removal? Wow, we are lucky. So Resplendent Angel. All right, so if I play Resplendent Angel, it's it's obviously great unless they have finality. So that's the problem, if they have finality. Our other option is just to draw a card with Arch of Orozka. And wait one, try to wait one turn till we have another mana where I can play Resplendent Angel and activate it and have it not die to finality. The token would survive. I guess that's true. Yeah, the token would survive. It would be a 5-5. Five five. So I guess it's maybe not that bad with the token surviving also. The thing is, like, Finality does make their Krasis a 6-6. Six six, and it's hard to attack in. Why would they lose if they Finality? Their Krasis is a 6-6. Six six. I, I could, could hit them for 5, but they could block the Lyra.
Yeah, I mean, I can count the mana. Yeah, we have eight mana. Eight mana doesn't do anything. We need nine. I'll play it. Arch costs six. This ability costs six. Well, that was a lot worse than a finality. Alright, I went for draw a card there because I wanted I was gonna try to try to draw a land, then we play the land, play the history. So they just want this in their graveyard. I mean, I guess I just oblige. I'm not going to sit here and take four all day. Hmm. So next turn, no, I can't kill him. All right, I guess I should have drawn a card last turn. I need to just keep drawing cards. Dang, that thing's big. Do I still have lightning strikes in my deck? Lightning strike would be... Oh no, these things are 6-4s now. Never mind, lightning strike doesn't help. Dang it. I was thinking, like with the strike, I was thinking, you know, like if these are 4-3s, I could attack in with all these, and whichever one Lyra blocks, I kill kind of thing. Alright, so... How far away are we for double activating Resplendent Angel? One, two, three, four, five, six. So not next turn, but the turn after, we can double activate Resplendent Angel, make it a seven, seven. Seriously, come on. Probably block with that 1-1. One, one. Maybe. Hmm. Be nice if we had green mana. Where shall I could activate? Why did I attack with the knights? Because Lyra would have just killed one and they gained five. I don't know. Maybe I guess I should have. They just gained... They do gain the five. This might not have been that bad of an idea. One, two, three, four, five, six.
This doesn't... Attack just doesn't really help us too much. Do they just keep both cards on top? Come on. I was hoping they were going to surveil some more. Kill this Lyra and kill the untapped Doom Whisperer. I, got, I didn't need a shock. I miscounted that. I thought I needed a shock to be able to to be able to activate plus cast both of those things. So now our opponent cannot pay the two life to serve to surveil, but they they kept the other card on top, so they know whatever that card is. They did keep it on top. They when they surveilled earlier, they kept both cards. So yeah, I figured it was a good card. How this thing go? This is nothing. All right, let's see if we can draw a removal spell or a burn spell. Something, we got our two draws. I'll do. I'll trade with the Doom Whisperer. Alright, they get their draw step and a Vivian tick up to find something for Aurelia. Hopefully they miss. Why would they miss? Their last draw Balance steps have only been Doom Whisperer, Doom Whisperer, Finality, Vivian Reed, Vras's Contempt. Oh, yeah, a, a, a Hydroid Crisis? That's on top? Good card to have on top. You can't stop nature. So we don't get to kill Shalai. Or sorry, we don't get to kill Vivian. Sorry, that's what I meant. Because because Shalai's only three power. They're back to eight. If only we had another Archer Varazka. We have ah, I'm a survivor. Plenty of mana. Come to me. That's this Vivian. Good thing Shalai's protecting Takali on her guard, so even if they have a cast down, um Shalai's doing a really good job of protecting Honor Guard. Why would they just waste these Jade Lights? Why are they just wasting these cards? They could just hold on to them. Let's 
do this again. I mean, they, they're, you know, they're just trying to kill me. I guess I just shouldn't be attacking with Shalai. Yeah, that's actually a bad attack. I'm not winning this race. I'm off by one. Yeah, that, that's a bad attack. I should sit back. You're going to do a whole lot, Quench. I got faith in you. Alright, never mind. That attack's now good. Never mind. That attack was good. Quench, why can't you Every be negate or something else? Draw Anything and fire. else. We were so close. They're at two. Uh. See, if they just didn't waste those jade lights, they could be playing those jade lights now. That's not good. The wilds are my shield. Okay. We're not dead yet. We still have another another shock, some more lightning strikes. We have two more lightning strikes and one more shock. Ah, quenched that. Eat it, Hydroid Crisis. Fortunately, they gained six life. That's the unfortunate part. And, you know, drawing six cards and everything. Uh, two more lands. Man, they had twice we like looked really good like we're about to end the game and then our opponent had a Vivian and that happened again. Twice we like had lethal with our angel and we're like about to kill him and they draw Vivian and play Vivian and kill our angel and then we're just and then they follow that up with a crisis. Overall, I I don't think that that's going to be a good matchup for us. It just kind of seems like we're pretty underpowered against Sultai, like all the things they can do. Um, but Krasis is, is just such a such a huge problem. Same with Vivian. Krasis and Vivian are just such big problems for our deck. Maybe I'm not sideboarding that well. Like maybe I need to be taking out Quench because like the game goes so so long, so Quench doesn't do very much. Maybe I need to be bringing in Ionize. Um, so, uh, Korean says that the matchup's kind of fifty-fifty for them. They generally win game one. Gotcha. Yeah, I I I kind of feel like I'd rather mainboard negate also than Quench. I know you were saying that you like Quench because of the mono blue matchup, but I feel like Quench is really bad against mono blue because they can have like the extra, like their spells are so cheap. Um, I, I don't like, like I would rather have negate against mono blue than Quench, honestly. So I feel like if, if that's like your your plan is to have the counter spell for mono blue, I would rather just play negate than quench. Um, but yeah, that that turn of yeah no you're right that that 
in the late game, they drew Whisper, Whisper, um, and then they surveilled two, kept both on top, and it was Finality, Vivian, and then the next two cards were Contempt, uh, and then Krasis. I think it was Contempt, Krasis, I think. I know it was Contempt after the Vivian. I know that's they had Whisper, Whisper, Finality, Vivian, Contempt, contempt and then Krasis. So... All right, so that's uh, Just Guy Angels. If you're watching this video later on on YouTube, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for another video. No, definitely not one less land. No, 25 land, absolutely. I would not play less land um, at all. I don't, I don't, I didn't really care for the treasure maps. Um, no, I wouldn't say more Lyra. I think the amount of Lyra is good. I don't know, maybe... I, I like just more... I want this to be a hard counter spell, and maybe more Teferi, at least in the sideboard. Um, I'd rather have Search Rose Canta than Treasure Map, I think. I, I don't know, maybe not. There's so many creatures here. More Resplendent Angel. That card's really good. As we saw, like, how, how good that card was, even, like, at... Like, yeah, this card was just awesome. More Resplendent Angel. Less Tajik. I'd rather have Resplendent Angel instead of Tajik. Rekindling Phoenix is nice. I like that card. I like Phoenix. I'd rather have Phoenix than Tajik. Um, I would. I want Clarions in the board. I like Clarion, but I want that as, as a sideboard card. But I, I'd want that to be a few copies. I don't, I don't really like... Um, Justice Strike at all. I would take that card way out. I don't like that card one bit. And yeah, didn't really like the treasure maps. I think Justice Strike is good against Drakes, and kind of that's that's kind of it. Just just not a necessary card to have. So you have answers to Niv Mizzet. Just just play Ixalan's Binding. If you want if you want stuff against Drakes, just play Ixalan's Binding. Don't play like instant. Or just play more Teferis. Teferi can just tuck Nivs and stuff. Teferi's great. And Teferi's good against other decks. So don't play Justice Strike. Yeah, Rekindling Phoenix. That that could certainly be a, a really good card to have in the deck. Yeah. But I think I think that's yeah. So I think that can cover yeah. So that's it. All right. So again, uh, for the YouTube video, again signing off. So thanks for watching over there. Uh, no bounties tonight. Just want to mention before signing off here again one one last time. I want to talk about Quip. Um. Really hopes. Hope y'all uh, sign up through my uh, referral code there. Sign up through the referral code. Um, Quip is an affordable, stylish electric toothbrush. It is the best best toothbrush I've ever owned. Um, it really is. I uh, recommend it quite a bit. Um, signing up through my code, you get a free uh, donation deck. So if you want your deck played here on stream, that's a way to do it. Get yourself... Uh, in electric toothbrush um signing up through my my code also gives you a free uh uh refill so like in three months they send you a new tube of toothpaste and a new brush head uh on there as well in three months which is a ten dollar value um so you get that for free for signing up through my code as well um I'm thinking about doing like a maybe whenever we get like 10 people that sign up through Quip, we do a 12 hour stream for that. Um, I was thinking about maybe doing something like that. Because um, I think I'm not 100% sure, but I think I may get a bonus whenever we get 10 people that sign up. I think there may be a bonus uh, for myself for that. I'm not sure though. Kind of need 10 people to sign up to, to find out. Um, but there we go. 
that's it for tonight. Yeah. So again, check Quip out. If you're watching this later on YouTube, you have the, the link for Quip is down below. But you can find my referral code link. All right, Skippa, see you tomorrow. So yeah, so I'll be back on tomorrow, same time, 3 to 10. You can find me every same time, every time. Um, and of course, you can find the replays on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ToddStevensMTG.